Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. We are into the first day of the celebration of Hanukkah, the 25th of Kislev, beginning this evening. I am super excited to bring you this teaching as the Holy Spirit has just confirmed so much in my heart all around me about teaching about Hanukkah. And before I forget, let me get my two menorahs. I'll be right back. I am back. Here is the little menorah that I've been using. And here is our big menorah. Look how big that is. Is that not amazing? And today I'm going to talk about the first candle, which will be lit tonight and used to light the other candles starting tonight. And so I'm going to be talking about the attendant candle, which is informally known as the helper candle. So as you join in, be super hopeful and expectant. God is just going to bring so much confirmation of his word of truth. Let me sit this big thing down. It is so big. Look how big that is. Oh my goodness. I am super excited tonight about Hanukkah. I hope you're excited as well. And this teaching is not like other teachings that you might get on Hanukkah. This is just a teaching that the Holy Spirit has put in my heart, and it is about the fruits of Holy Spirit in our life as in Galatians 5, which we'll get to momentarily. So as we enter into today's teaching, I'm going to start with prayer. God, we just bless your name. We thank you, God, for the fullness of joy that's been given to us by the all of gladness that you've anointed us with because we love righteousness and we hate lawlessness. And God, that you're going to bring such an anointing of your Holy Spirit in our lives to present the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, it is beautiful, Andrea. Let me show you. I'll be using this as an example. But let me show you. This is so amazing, okay? Because, again, I was ordering a butter dish for my sourdough bread and I didn't realize how expensive butter dishes were. This one was 50% off at Sur La Table, that looks like Sur La Table. And it was Deruda, and we've collected Deruda over the last, ever since Rich and I have been married, we collected some Deruda pieces here and there. And they had free shipping if you ordered a certain amount. And I hate paying shipping costs. If I know that I can get free shipping, just paying a little bit more and buying something that I'm going to use. And so they happen to have this on a massive sale. Is that not amazing? It has a marble bottom. Look at this. Is this not beautiful? And here is the attendant candle, which is informally known as the helper. And we're going to talk about this today and about Hanukkah which starts this evening. It is going to be an amazing teaching. I cannot wait to find out what Holy Spirit brings because 1 Corinthians 2 says that Holy Spirit knows the mind of God, that he searches out the deep things of God. He shows us things that are fenced in and hidden. And because we have the Spirit of God, that he brings that interpretation of different scriptures combining them for the need, for the occasion, the message, and Holy Spirit interprets them, amen. And so that's what God is doing as we look at Hanukkah, which is also the Hebrew word for the Feast of Dedication. And we're looking at rededicating ourselves, examining ourselves as we look at the fruits of Holy Spirit, and so the nine branches of the menorah for Hanukkah are different than the seven branches in the first menorah that was prescribed for the making of the temple in the holy place. And so the seven branched menorah, and just imagine that these all have branches and one was off each side. And the seven branch menorah would look like the one that 
God prescribed to be made for the holy place. And that sevenfold branch in the holy place represents the sevenfold dimension of Holy Spirit. We see this in Isaiah 11, 1 and 2. And there shall be a branch from Jesse. And that branch is Jesus Christ. And I go into that extensively in my book, Mindfulness, Amount of Christ. It's amazing. And that branch represents Jesus Christ as the vine, the vine of God, the door to salvation. Amen. And there shall be a branch from Jesse, and he shall have the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And verse 3 says that God will make him of quick understanding, which is Ruach, spirit, in the fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord, and he will distribute equity to the poor, to the downtrodden, to the meek, and then by the breath of his lips he will slay wickedness, and by the rod he will smite the oppressor. That's prophesying of Jesus Christ that will walk in the sevenfold dimension of Holy Spirit as he is baptized by John, Matthew 3, and that baptism was to fulfill all righteousness. Good morning, Lee and Kim. That baptism is different from the baptism that you and I enter into. Our baptism is repentance, which is to turn away from the world and to turn towards God. Jesus didn't have sin, so he didn't need to repent. His baptism was the fulfillment of righteousness. So when he came up from the River Jordan, the Holy Spirit descended from heaven upon Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit upon Jesus Christ represented Isaiah 11 too, the fullness thereof. And then the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to overcome Satan and the three temptations. And Jesus from that moment forward demonstrated the power of God in his life. And so we're looking at that being different than what we're looking at with Hanukkah and the nine branched menorah. And so when we're looking at, and let me just show you for those that haven't seen it, this is the big menorah that was almost nothing at Sur La Table and they sold out immediately. <clears throat> and so we're going to be looking at the nine branch menorah <clears throat> because when Holy Spirit told me to teach on it immediately, I got behind a personalized tag coming back home, dropping Rich off at work and or coming back home, picking him up from work, I should say. And the personalized tag was nine fruit. And God says, Robin, just as Jesus walked in a demonstration of the sevenfold Holy Spirit, the presence of God, the holiness of God, God said, the evidence of the fruit of Holy Spirit in our lives is the nine fruits mentioned in Galatians 5, as well as the nine demonstrations of the Holy Spirit in those gifts. But I'm going to really be talking about the fruits today in Galatians 5. And so when we look at the menorah, and I'm just going to pray, Holy Spirit is telling me heaviness is on somebody and the enemy's attacking you. So I'm just going to pray. I just bind the spirit of divination in Jesus' name. God, I just take the sword of your word and cut those cords, the keys of the kingdom of heaven that you've given me. And I just command in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of God, Python to loose God's people that are listening and watching this broadcast and to go into the wilderness in Jesus' name. And God, I just call in your Ruach HaKodesh Holy Spirit to be upon each and every listener to bring peace, ruling their heart, and surpassing their understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. And so God told me today, as we look at the menorah, we're going to look at the miracle with the oil. We're going to look at the middle candle, the shamash, and we're going to see revelation that God wants to give us. And we're going to see the demonstration of that Hanukkah menorah that we're celebrating of God's miracle. 
and that likened to the Maccabean revolt, that Hanukkah is also the celebration of Holy Spirit operating in us, and that we can be that light to the world as Holy Spirit is in us. Amen. And so let's look at the demonstration of the miracle. Amen, Amy. Let's look at the demonstration of the miracle in relation to what happened with this miracle, right? The miracle of the menorah and the miracle of the cruise of oil. And so when the Maccabean revolt happened and the Maccabees ended up coming against the Syrian king's oppression, even though it was over a 30 plus year wrestling match, the first pronounced phase we can see from 167 to 160 BC before Christ. And in about that 165 year that the Maccabeans ended up capturing the city of Jerusalem and obtaining the temple, getting that uh, temple back, the temple of God, and having the anointing of God's name, Jealous, His Holiness, and just like we see with Jesus cleaning out the temple and that prophecy is in the Psalms where that he will be zealous, he will have jealousy for God's house. That was the anointing of Holy Spirit upon the Maccabean, the Maccabees. And they ended up cleaning out the second temple because mixture of the pagan cultures in a part of the priesthood had gotten into the temple and they were bringing mixture to the people. And so the Maccabees were the ones that were jealous for the statutes of God, the purity of God. And so they cleansed the temple of all the unholy things, one of which was unholy profane oil that was not pure oil. And so all that was found at the time of the cleansing was one cruise of oil and they knew that that was just enough for one day, and yet it would take eight days to make a pure prescription as laid out by God for pure oil. And they knew that it would not be sufficient to like the menorah for eight days. So this miracle happened. And this one cruise of oil lasted eight days, which is why we have the nine branch menorah and the celebration of Hanukkah was for capturing Jerusalem, cleansing the temple, and the miracle of the oil that lasted eight days instead of one. And so it says in the miracle of the cruise of oil, the miracle of Hanukkah is an agada depicted in the Babylonian Talmud as one of the reasons for Hanukkah. In the story, the miracle occurred after the liberation of the temple in Jerusalem during the Maccabean Revolt, and it describes the finding of a jug of pure oil that was to be enough to light the lamp for one day, but it lasted eight days. During the period of the Second Temple, at about 200 BC, Antichius III, the Seleucid king of Syria, took over the kingdom of Judea. He allowed the Jews at that time to live in Judea and to have autonomous rule where they could carry out their own faith. However, another king came in, and with that king, there was oppression, and that was Antichius IV that replaced him. And after Antichius came in, he oppressed the Jews and said, you can't practice your faith. And then all of a sudden, there were many Jews that went along with these demands and became what's called Hellenized Jews, which is where mixture came into the priesthood at that time. And so they ended up, as Antichius invaded Jerusalem, the capital of Israel, he killed thousands, and he put up an altar to Zeus in the Holy Temple. And so imagine how profane that was and that there were Hellenized Jews that went along with it, that went into that Greek influence. And they went along with, because Antichius IV was both Syria and Greece combined in that particular rulership. And so they brought in those Greek gods, and there was a part of the priesthood that was okay with Zeus being put in the Holy Temple of God, but not the Judas Maccabee. <clears throat> the Maccabeans, oh my goodness, 
they would not tolerate it because it was profane. It was unholy. And so they cleansed the temple after they captured Jerusalem again. And so in the menorah with only one cruise of oil that was enough for one day, that ended up lasting eight days. Hence the nine branch menorah, the nine branch menorah, if you can see it, ended up coming about and it was in the 25th day of Keslev, the month of Keslev. And that month indicates thickening because of the rain. And I cannot help but think of Zechariah 10 and Joel 2, where there's a torrential downpour, 23. And that's the harvest. That's the latter rain. And it just brings such a harvest. And so I think about Keslev. And the word in us, Mark 4, that yields 30, 60, 100 fold, verse 20, and that ver the parable after that, which I unpack extensively in Mindfulness of Christ, that a candle is brought into a room to be put on a lampstand, not under a bed, and that things are hidden temporarily in order that they be made known. And so Jesus is saying that that light is the truth that comes into the dark place of the soul, and that in time, it will yield a harvest revealing the truth of Holy Scripture. And so we're going to look at the nine branch menorah being the nine branches of the representation of the nine fruits of Holy Spirit operative in us. And that those nine fruits of Holy Spirit, as we see with the holy place and the seven branch menorah, representing the sevenfold dimension of Holy Spirit that I mentioned from Isaiah 11, 1 and 2, prophesying of Jesus, that the sevenfold dimension of Holy Spirit rested completely on Jesus Christ. And so when we look at the nine branch menorah, this is the demonstration of Holy Spirit in and upon us as we are the temple of Holy Spirit. And so we're going to look at briefly, we're still going to go back to Nehemiah because Nehemiah at the beginning in chapter one is at the time of Keslev. A particular date isn't mentioned, but, and remember that it's a couple of hundred years before the Maccabean revolt, but I cannot help but see a reflection of what happened in Nehemiah beginning in Nehemiah one and the temple and the wall, Jerusalem, are just, you know, taken down, destroyed. God calls Nehemiah to build the wall. Zerubbabel, he calls in Zechariah to rebuild the temple. And that we see Zechariah prophesying to the governor, the rightful king of Judah, to rebuild the temple. And so there again is the rebuilding kind of like scripture saying repairer of the breach. We see this demonstration in Isaiah 54, the prophecy of the barren woman. And so the barren woman looks destitute, broken down, busted up, poor, but God is showing. No, when the spirit of God comes on his people, they're made whole and they become a weapon in his hand against the works of the enemy. And he just sends the enemy fleeing and God causes his people to abound in grace and that nothing of the enemy can come against you and prosper that you have Jesus Christ who is the life and that life is the light of men, John 1, 4. And so we're going to look at the helper candle. We're going to look go back to Nehemiah and we're going to talk about the Shamash candle of the menorah, which is lit initially. And I'm going to talk about what it does. And I'm going to talk about the lighting of the first candle tonight. And we're going to look at Galatians 5 and the fruits of Holy Spirit, the nine fruits. Amen. And so this candle will be in the middle right here. It will be the middle candle and it is called the Shamash. And the Shamash is called the attendant candle, the servant candle. Informally, it is known as the helper candle. What's interesting, 
the two car tags I saw yesterday. So look at all the car tags that I've seen recently and posted. Nine fruit, then, and that was at the beginning of the week. And then yesterday I saw Yahweh and to help. And I am like, oh my goodness, because God told me to teach this. Listen, I am not brilliant. I didn't do all this research and put everything together. I am just purely going at the leading of Holy Spirit. And God is just witnessing about what he wants to bring because the Feast of Dedication, as we look at tonight, we're looking at it, although it's not pointed, pointed out as a feast in the Bible, it's a feast in which the Jewish people celebrate God's miracles, his mighty works. And we're just going to get into that, the Feast of Dedication being the feast where we ensure that our heart is completely dedicated to God. This time of year, people can get so busy, worried about getting gifts, doing things. You know, this time of year, I just shut down every single year. Ever since I've been in full-time ministry, God has me busy, 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 busy from January through November and come Thanksgiving to the rest of the year. God just has me take it slower. I'm not doing writing as much. I'm doing research for all my writing. That's to start back in January for the book, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease, which is going to be beyond phenomenal, okay? And we're going to submit it for a Pulitzer, and whether or not it gets a Pulitzer, that's up to God. But maybe someone will read it and be touched, right? And so when we look at what God is trying to get to us today, the message he's trying to get to us today is, look, the world is happening. You're in it. But don't be of it. You're of another kingdom. And you bring the light of that kingdom into the world through Jesus Christ, the hope of glory. Amen. And so the scriptures that says, be in the world, but not of the world. That scripture in relation to pointed out is John 15, 19 through 21. Jesus says, you know, you're in the world, but listen, being in the world doesn't mean you have to be of it. And so you're going to see the different kingdoms in the forbidden fruit, the spiritual dis-ease beginning in chapter two and three, and really expounding on those kingdoms in four and five and six. You're going to see the warfare between the two kingdoms and our power in the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And so the kingdom of heaven was first here in Eden. And when the fall happened and the eat, eating of Eve of the forbidden fruit and giving it to Adam, that fall brought in a new kingdom. And that kingdom on earth, the second kingdom, became the kingdom of the world. And so when we come to salvation and we repent, we're baptized, it is a demonstration I'm turning away from the kingdom of the world, and I'm turning toward the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. Amen. <clears throat> this world doesn't supply our needs, okay? You've got to get this in your knower. It is God who supplies for all that you have need of. If you're anxious, if you're stressed out, it's evidence that you're looking to the world to supply for you. And so the recipe that God had me preach on, the leading up to Pentecost on my channel, that recipe is all in Matthew 6, give, fast, and pray. And those three things are the recipe that keeps us free from the world. And so when we're looking at the Feast of Dedication, we're again examining our hearts. Are there things of the world in us? And so how can we see this? Is by the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The fruits always speak. And mindfulness, the mind of Christ, which is a book on real, lasting deliverance. It's not about casting out demons. It is about John eight thirty two. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. And as you're going to see in the forbidden fruit, the spiritual disease, the supernatural deliverances that defy gravity, science, 
that are the manifestation of another kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, that God made known in my freedom in my life. John 8, 36, you, the, it is the Son. You shall know the Son, and the Son shall set you free. Whom the Son sets free, Jesus Christ, is free indeed. And so we're going to look at the demonstration of the fruits of Holy Spirit, which are evidence of God's fire in our life. We're also going to look at this middle candle, the Shamash, and how it lights the eight other candles. And we're going to look at a couple of fruits of Holy Spirit. But before we get to that, let me read from Nehemiah 1. Nehemiah 1 and I just want to read a little bit more of Nehemiah. And this is unpacked. And what my whole first book of God's firewall healing of the soul session won. The light, which is beyond phenomenal. And people cannot put it down. It is totally Holy Spirit inspired. And so that whole first book unpacks the first chapter of Nehemiah extensively. And so let's look at Nehemiah 1. Amen, Amy. And let's look at verses 7 through 11. And again, I'm picking up from yesterday. Nehemiah 1, verses 7 through 11 from the Amplified Classic. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commands, commandments, statutes, ordinances, which you have commanded your servant Moses, the Ten Commandments. And so when Jesus came, grace raised the, raised the standard. No longer did you have to look at someone to lust after them and to have adultery. I mean, no longer did you have to commit the act to have adultery. You could just look at someone and lust for them and have committed adultery in the heart. No longer did you have to keep get a weapon and end someone's life. You could just have hatred in your heart towards a person and you've committed murder. Jesus, grace raised the standard. And so when we're looking at the Feast of Rededication, we're going to be looking at the fruits of Holy Spirit. Are those nine fruits, just like the nine branches of the menorah, are those nine fruits evidence in our life? And so day one today, we're going to really focus on the first two mentioned in Galatians 5 of the fruits of Holy Spirit. And each day we're just going to get into another one of the fruits of Holy Spirit in Galatians, and which is to be evidence of Holy Spirit being in us, in our lives. Amen. And I'm also not going to just get into spiritual things, but I'm also going to bring some recommendations in relation to the body, to the physical body, that there are things that you might not be operative in. Hey, friend, because it's not just spiritual, but it's also physical. And as God gave me revelation, oh my goodness, for the G-protein coupled receptor and the bittersweet taste test in Mindfulness Mind of Christ, that was only Holy Spirit unveiled for that bittersweet taste test, the apple cider vinegar and the honey, which many have said has gotten delivered because it hits the G-protein coupled receptor, which stores memories all through the body. Half of the flavors are eyes, ears, smell, taste in the body. You have eyes, ears, smell, taste in your body. And those receptors store memories that when a neuropeptide or frequency hits it, it unpacks it. And that's where your emotions come from. So your perception and your behavior comes from that G-protein coupled receptor, which is extensively and exhaustively unpacked in mindfulness of mind Christ. And so the forbidden fruit, the spiritual disease, is a sequel. God told me that I did not expound on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the spiritual disease enough. And he wanted an entire book committed to it. And so this next book, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease, is going to be as long as mindfulness, which is which would have been close to 600 pages in an 11 font, but I made the font a 10. I'm not going to do that in The Forbidden Fruit. I'm going to keep it 11. And so it might be, it's going to be over 500 pages 
probably closer to 600 because God just wants to bring this wisdom. What's interesting is he's bringing in the lactobacillus DNA methylation, the fourth dimension. He's bringing in the morphogenetic field. He's bringing in uh, uh, just all kinds of stuff, PTSD. But he's bringing in a component of the good bacterium, which is called psychobiotics. What does that mean? That the bacteria in your belly, the good part that God has given us, which is in daily bread called sourdough bread, the ancient fermented dough. And I'm going to be bringing you information about that as I'm led. And so that particular fermentation has lactobacillus in it. And there's different strains of lactobacillus. And that particular strain is a psychobiotic, which helps with anxiety, which helps with depression, that causes your brain to be hyper alert. So you're vigilant, like Peter said, be sober, be vigilant. So you can be walking and just living life. And because of your poor diet, your poor microbiome, as well as your hormonal imbalance, you might not be sober. It might be as though you're drunk and you're hung over and you're not hyper aware and you're not have a, able to have the wherewithal inside of your members to walk in the fullness of the fruits of Holy Spirit. And so God is going to be bringing in some practical application with that. What's interesting is I found out that these t particular bacterium interact with the G protein coupled receptor and actually cause it to perform incredibly, right, Kelsey? And so that is only God. I am just beyond blown away. Oh my goodness. So I'm not going to get into all that right now, but that's just an intro. So when we look at verse 7, Nehemiah, like Daniel, is acknowledging, oh my goodness, God, we have sinned against you because you told Moses that if we transgress, that will be scattered. The whole nation will be scattered. And so in God's firewall healing of the soul session, when the light, I unpack that with the dissociation, the fragmentation of the soul, which all of us fra are fragmented and all of us dissociate in some measure. It is called a mood. And that mood is demonstrated in our personalities when something happens in life, right? Hey, Belinda. Hey, Carol. God bless. And so let's look at verses 8 through 11. And I just want to bring this to you because this represents rededicating our members, our heart and our mind. Romans 12, 1, consecration of the body is holy. And then Romans 12, 2, the transformation of the mind. And I want to bring in Exodus 28, verses 36 through 39, thereabout, to just bring that home in today so that you can get understanding as we begin this feast of dedication tonight. And so verse 8, remember earnestly what you commanded your servant Moses. If you transgress and are unfaithful, and this is in Deuteronomy 12, 5, if you transgress and are unfaithful, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though your outcasts are in the farthest parts of the heavens, the expanse of space, yet will I gather you them from there and will bring them to the place in which I've chosen my name to dwell. And so we're going to look at this middle candle as the helper and it's the Holy Spirit. When we come to salvation, it's Holy Spirit that shows us a dead man on a tree is the way to salvation. First Corinthians 2, because it's foolish to the natural mind. And so this first candle, the shamash, the attendant, the helper, is Holy Spirit inside of us, helping us comprehend and understand about Christ Jesus growing strong in spirit. And so this shamash is a good demonstration of verse 9 in Nehemiah 1. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though your outcasts were in the farthest parts of the heavens, the expanse of outer space, yet will I gather them from there and will bring them to the place in which I've chosen to set my name. And so let's look at this attendant candle. The helper, informally, the servant, 
which is Christ in us, the hope of glory by the power of Holy Spirit, causing us to be servants, a bond servant of the Most High. And I've done extensive teachings on that from Song of Solomon 1 on my other channel, Robin Kirby Gatto. And so this middle candle is Holy Spirit in us. And as it's lit to light the first candle tonight, which I'll place another candle right here, I'll take the attendant candle and I'll light the first candle with it. And so we can also look at these branches as places of our soul in which Holy Spirit operates in the fullness thereof, where we're all brought together. All these places of our soul are brought together and it's brought to the place where God's name dwells. And so as Nehemiah 9, as though you be scattered as far out as outer space, I will bring you back, says the living God, to the place where my name dwells. And it might be that you've not committed a sin, but remember, it is about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And I get into it a little bit in that book, God's Firewall Healing of the Soul, Session 1, The Light. But I get extensively into it in the Forbidden Fruit, the Spiritual Disease. And so you might not have committed sin, but you have knowledge of it. And that sin is of the kingdom of the world from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so it might have an effect inside of your soul and cause that part of your soul to be. So it would almost be like this branch was taken off. But God, by the power of the grace of the Holy Spirit in us operating, makes us whole. We are branches in the vine. He is the vine and we are the branches. And so imagine Christ in us, the hope of glory through the Holy Spirit, bringing those fragmented places. Let's say you have trouble with self-control and people are looking at you like you're crazy. Why don't you have self-control? Well, there might be one area of your soul which is influencing that where you have PTSD and you're triggered and you're not made whole. You haven't received the fullness of that healing because there are areas inside of your body that are deficient, let's say in your hormones being messed up, even your microbiota, that it's not only just a spiritual issue. That is why God is about the whole person. And so we're going to be looking at the first two fruits of Holy Spirit in just a minute from Galatians 5, but I want to do Exodus 28 and I want to do the rest of Nehemiah 1. And so, Nehemiah 1.10, Now these are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and your strong hand. And so, again, the servant candle, Shamash, represents Holy Spirit in us, making us a bond servant. And so, that wholeness of the Holy Spirit fruit in our lives shows us to be a bond servant of God. Praise God, Carol. This is all God. I cannot take any credit. Verse 11, O oh Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant. So again, the shamash, the servant candle, the attendant candle, the helper candle, Holy Spirit in us is offering up prayers of righteousness as in the ancient days, Malachi 3 verse 4, in which God draws near, James 4, be, repent of your ways, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. That is a reflection of Malachi 3, 4, and 5. After we've been purified by the messenger of covenant, the big M, God, Jesus Christ, who has brought the message of the kingdom of God, who has preached the message of the kingdom, will be purified by fire and a fuller soap. And it's funny because I had taught on fuller soap years ago in Malachi 3, and in my memories, a couple days after teaching on Malachi 3, the Fuller's Soap, I saw a personalized tag, Fuller, and I put that up in my memories today. And so it is, the Malachi 3 is for the purification of the priest, the rededication of the priest, Malachi 3, and we'll get to that tomorrow because I don't have time today. So, O oh Lord, verse 11, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and the prayer of your servants who delight to revere and fear your name, your nature and attributes, and prosper, I pray you, your servant this day, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, for I was a cupbearer to the king. And so we're talking about God's mercy, his servant anointing in and upon our lives as a bond servant of God, 
as we receive healing in areas of our soul that we could recognize that the world is operative in us. And you'll say, oh, Robin, that's not happening to me. Well, are you better than Isaiah the prophet? Are you better than him? Because Isaiah, who was the most righteous man at the time, Job was the most righteous man. When the enemy had come against them in relation to Job, but in the prophet Isaiah, he is in the midst of the glory of God. And he says, I'm a man of unclean lips and I'm among a people of unclean lips. Remember, Jesus said, it's not what goes into a man's mouth that defiles him. It's what comes out of his mouth because whatever is in his heart is coming out of his mouth. What are you speaking? Are you talking poorly about others? Are you complaining? Are you negative? That is evidence that you are fragmented in that area of your soul. And you might not, you might be fine momentarily, but let something happen in your life that will throw you off kilter and watch what mood, what fruit comes from that space, right? And so now let's go to Exodus 28, and then I'm going to go to Galatians 5, and we're going to look at two fruits of Holy Spirit. God wanted me to get into Exodus 28 today. These were the scriptures that he brought to me. And we're going to look at this word in relation to dedicate and dedication. It is about Romans 12, 1, that we consecrate and dedicate our body as holy. And as I get into that extensively, which is what the whole book of Mindfulness, Mind of Christ is about, the mind and body connection with Romans 12, 1, the intellect of the body specifically expressed at the G-protein coupled receptor and how it's operative and its communication to the brain and neurons. Romans 12, 1, to consecrate the body is holy. Romans 12, 2, then the mind's going to be transformed. And so everybody tries, the general population of Christians try to get delivered from the head down to the body. And that's not going to happen. It comes from the body up to the head. And so in Exodus 28, I want to start in verse uh, 35. After it mentions about the high priest, this is about Aaron and about what God has prescribed for his attire to enter into the Holy of Holies, to go into the temple and to be able to enter into the Holy of Holies. And specifically about this particular band that will be on his head. And I had had a vision of this band. I will never forget in about 2005, 2005, God gave me this vision and there was a gold band and it said, holy unto the Lord. And I just, you know, it was just a vision. And lo and behold, I all of a sudden start, he directed me to read Exodus 28. And there it is, is the band holy unto the Lord that was on air in the high priest at the time. And so it just indicates that we are to be set apart as holy. Amen. We're to be dedicated as holy. Amen. So verse 35, Exodus 28, Amplified Classic. Aaron shall wear the robe when he ministers, and its sound shall be heard when he goes into the Holy of Holies. Now, just pause and think about that. That just gives me goosebumps. Why? Because in my book that Holy Spirit had me write, Rev 22.2, that had all of Tesla's inventions, God has me get into frequencies and has me get into frequencies that it is the only thing truly that can penetrate water because water bonds are so tight that it will not let anything inside of it, but yet frequencies can penetrate water and we're largely composed of water. And then God has me get into Acts 2 about how Holy Spirit came into the upper room, room as a sound. Okay, and so here, I just find it beyond amazing. It touches me. I don't know how, you've, how you're affected, but because I know the science and physiology of what's going on, this just is blessing me. Verse 35, Aaron shall wear the robe when he ministers, and its sound shall be heard when he goes alone into the holy of holies. And it's funny because... The personalized tag I got behind today, which I didn't take a picture of, I almost did, but I thought, why, why would I take a picture of that, was A-L-O-N-Z, alones, alones. And I was like, what? And here, 
It says, Aaron shall wear the robe when he ministers, and its sound shall be heard when he goes alone into the Holy of Holies before the Lord, and when he comes out, lest he die there. Lest he die there. And so we see that in verse 35. And as we look at Aharon, the Hebrew word for Aaron, Aaron's name means light bringer. And so as we look at the attendant candle, the helper in us, the light of Jesus, John 1, 4, which is my personalized tag on my new car, on my Kia K5. God is good. And so I, I just love, in him was life, and that life is the light of men. So Christ in us, the hope of glory, brings the Holy Spirit in and upon our members in great measure as we're made whole, and Holy Spirit helps us, right? Uh, it's Holy Spirit brings the fullness of light, truth into our members. And so Aaron means light bringer. Is that not amazing? Aaron means light bringer. And let's just go a little deeper into this. God wants me to go just a little bit deeper. And so when he ministers, it says in the King James Version, and it shall be upon Aaron to minister and his sound shall be heard. Is that not amazing? I mean, does that not blow your mind that the sound of the robe is that important to God? Is that not amazing? Let's look at the word minister and let's look at the word sound. I just have to. Holy Spirit has intrigued me with this. And this particular word is shalroth, shalroth for minister. And it means to minister. And it also means servant. It also means servant. Is that not amazing? It means wait on. And so we wait on God. Those that wait on the Lord. Isaiah, 30, uh, Isaiah 40, 31. Those that wait on the Lord, they shall mount up with wings of eagles, right? Those that wait on the Lord, amen. And so that is servant, amen. And so we, Isaiah 40, 31. And so we're seeing here, that Aaron represents a servant of God. Shalroth, he's a minister. He's a servant, okay? And there's many di different uh, derivatives of servant. The normal one is ebed in Hebrew. But here we see also that Shalroth means a ministering servant, right? And this truly represents what Jesus Christ has called us. Isaiah, uh, Luke 22, that the greatest among you shall be a servant, one who ministers, who serves others, right? And so, and it shall be upon Aaron to minister, and his sound shall be heard when he goeth into the holy place before the Lord, the holy of holies, and when he cometh out, that he die not. And so, the word sound here in Hebrew is cool, which I've done many, many times. It literally sounds like K-C-O-O-L, uh, but it's in a twist, kind of like coal. Like, imagine cool being a coal, like a coal touched to your mouth. And so, we're looking at Isaiah 6, where the prophet's lips are cleansed. And so, we can see that variation in relation to bringing the sound and so, this particular word in Hebrew means the crackling, the cry, the thunder, the spark. And so, it's the spark of God's word, his light, his truth in our members. So, let's go a little bit further in uh, Exodus 28. So, now verse 36, and this is what I'm getting to, and this is where we're going to end before we jump into Galatians 5 and the fruits of Holy Spirit. And you shall make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it like the engravings of a signet, holy to the Lord. You shall fasten it to the front of the turban with a blue cord, and it shall be upon Aaron's forehead, that Aaron may take upon himself and bear iniquity connected with the holy things, which the Israelites shall give and dedicate. There's the word dedicate. And it shall always be upon his forehead that they may be accepted before the Lord in the priest's person. And so that's where I'm going to kind of end with this Hebrew word of dedicate in Exodus 28 before jumping to Galatians 5. And so let's look at this particular word that's being used for dedicate. And it's funny because I do have Exodus 28 in chapter 3. 
of the forbidden fruit, the spiritual disease, and it's phenomenal. It's amazing. Not this part, but another part. It's amazing. And so, Exodus 28, in relation to the gold crown, that it is to be that he is dedicated. And here in the King James, it says, hallow. <clears throat> and so, this word for hallow is kadosh, kadash. And it means to prepare, proclaim, purify, sanctify, the, sanctify. It's very likened, similar to Kodesh for holy, where we see Holy Spirit, HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. And so this word Kadash means appoint, consecrate, dedicate, hallow, prepare, purify, sanctify, so, Holy Spirit in us purifies our hearts, making us whole in fragmented areas, bringing the fullness thereof of the light of God to those areas. And so, we're going to look at this attendant candle that I mentioned, Holy Spirit in us revealing Christ Jesus, bringing the light of truth where we're not a, now a light bearer of Christ by the fruits of Holy Spirit that are present in our lives. And so let's end with Galatians 5 and look at the two fruits of Holy Spirit, the first two fruits. And these will be much more brief because I can't do an extensive teaching on it, but I'm just going to bring you gold nuggets to get you hungry and thirsty for righteousness to do more seeking of it on your own in Holy Scripture. And so in Galatians 5, we're going to look at verse 22 and think about 22, the door, the tov, the cross covenant, Hebrew letter, and the door, Isaiah twenty two twenty two, where Jesus is the door, Revelation 3, 7 and 8. And so, verse 22, but the fruit of Holy Spirit, the work which his presence within us accomplishes is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Let me repeat those nine fruits. And again, Monday, I saw a personalized tag, nine fruit, and I put the picture up. It's so funny because the other day, I just told Rich, I said, Rich, I don't know if I'm having open visions or what, because I'm always seeing these personalized tags, and they're always saying stuff, but I've got evidence that I'm actually seeing it, Okay. At least most of them, other, others of them, I don't know. All I know is that God just speaks to me that way for whatever reason. But the fruit of Holy Spirit, the work which His presence within accomplishes, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The nine fruits of Holy Spirit. And so, let's look briefly at love and joy today. When we look at 1 Corinthians 13, 13, it shows us faith, hope, hope, love, and faith, love, and joy. And the greatest of those, let me get to that, and that faith, that hope, and love, faith, hope, and love, let me get to that. See, I have to keep myself in check because I am just doing so much study and I want to make sure I get it all right. Faith, hope, and love abide. Okay, 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And out of these three, the greatest of these is love. And so when we look at this particular candle, the attendant candle, Holy Spirit in us, it is all, you know, Ephesians 3, 17 and 18, that we be rooted deeply in the love of Christ, ground, secured, grounded securely in the love of Christ. 1 John 4, 18, that God's perfect love drives out fear where there's no thought or dread of punishment. And so this first of the nine candles is God's love that abides in us. We abide in him. He abides in us. And so this is evidence through love. You can have all the gifts, 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 13, 1 Corinthians 14 of the Holy Spirit. But if you have not love, then you're just a sounding gong, right? And so this first candle of the helper, of Jesus, the branch, the servant in us, is going to be evidenced in our love, that it's pure, 
How do we see this? Luke 6, 35, that we love our enemies. We bless them. We do things for them, benefiting them. And we don't look for anything in return. And then we prove ourselves to be true sons and daughters of God. And so this first attendant candle, let's look at the fruit of love. Amen. And that the greatest of all the fruit is love. So you can't really have the manifestation and the fullness of the other fruit unless you first have love. Amen. And so then the second candle, which it would light right here. In fact, let me just go get my other candles. Okay. Oops. Let me go get my other candles so I can bring them. And that way I'll have two candles. So here are the Hanukkah candles. And so let me get the other candle. And so we're going to acknowledge tonight, as Rich and I light the candle, we're going to watch some Hanukkah historical uh, shows, YouTube videos, and we're going to do that as our Hanukkah celebration beginning tonight. And so the first candle that will be lit as we light it, the servant candle, we'll acknowledge that we're in the love of Christ. It is because God so loved the world, John three sixteen, that he sent his son. And so we're going to be acknowledging that love of Christ in us, the hope of glory, and that Holy Spirit has brought us that revelation and helped us to understand that revelation and helps us daily in our lives and look at areas where we don't have that love and that we want to be open for God's reproof and correction of that love to be made known in our hearts. Amen. Praise God, Ashley and Marguerite. And so this is the first candle. And then we're going to do this tonight. So we light the first candle, the attendant, the helper, the servant, and we're going to acknowledge God's servanthood in us that our first and foremost title, only title, is to be a servant of God, that we are a bond servant. That's what Paul continually said. And other the other apostles, a bond servant of God, a bond servant of Christ, a bond servant. And so the second candle that will also be lit tonight by the first candle, pick it up. We're going to acknowledge joy. Nehemiah 8.10, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And about the joy of our salvation. In order to walk in true repentance, you acknowledge the joy. You have joy of your salvation. And that is the evidence of your dedication. And that can only be done when you walk in true love of God and knowing that there's nothing to fear. The world is being removed from your members and that you have the joy of your salvation. So let me just sit this down for a minute and then let me get to... That scripture in Psalms, in the, I think it's Psalm 51, Psalm 51, it is, let me get that particular scripture. I'm almost positive it's Psalm 51. Yeah, it is Psalm 51. So let's look at this particular scripture, verse 12, where David says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. And so let's look at this particular word in Hebrew. And this is where we'll end and we'll return for the next few days for the other ones. And so Psalm 51 verse 9, as we look at uh, verse 10, uh, hold on one second, let me make sure. Verse 12, verse 12. Psalm 51, verse 12, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And so this word joy here is sason, sason, and it means gladness, it means cheerfulness, it means mirth, it means rejoicing. And this comes from the Hebrew word sus, which means to be bright. And so again, it's about light, it's about cheerfulness, and it means to be glad, it means to make mirth. It means to rejoice. And isn't that perfect for this time of year? To make mirth like Mary. And so again, Psalm 51, 
Verse 12, and restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. And so salvation is yashash, yasha, and it means deliverance, prosperity, safety, salvation. Again, the word salvation is not just saving unto eternal life through Jesus Christ. It means what do you need? Do you need victory? Do you need healing? Do you need wholeness? Do you need prosperity in life and in health as your soul prospers? That is what salvation need, means. And so as we light with this attendant candle, okay? In fact, I think it's this one. Let me change these out. I just want to make sure I have them right. As we light, and I noticed that one's a little off down here, so I'm going to have to get a thing to make it hold up straight. In fact, let me get another candle because that bottom is just a little off. I was wondering why it was doing that the very first time. So this bottom is better. So as we get this, the love of Christ in us, God so loved the world, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, the evidence of God's love in us, and we light this other candle, this, fir this first candle on the end, we're going to acknowledge that we have the joy of the Lord is our salvation, that he has restored it to us and caused us to prosper. It's the evidence of our dedication. This word restore in Hebrew is shub, and it means to return back. It means to restore. It means again. It means turn again. It means to set again, and it means to take back. If you're not walking in joy of the Lord, okay, let's look at this because I only don't want, don't want to address just the spiritual. I want to address the physical as well. I have individual clients that I work with where we're, it's about the whole body with health and wellness, the whole person, you know, spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, occupational relationships, environment, everything. And so as we look at the joy of the Lord as our salvation, if you have areas in your members where your hormones are messed up and you're irritated, you're having mood swings or you're depressed, you're not going to walk in the fullness of the joy of the Lord. And so you need to go to your doctor. You need to do blood work and see what is what. The other thing, if your gut microbiome is off, if you don't have enough of the good bacteria, the lactobacillus, the bifidobacteria, and I'm also going to put up... Uh, particular supplementation that one of the people that watch my broadcast on YouTube, where they don't like the sourdough bread, but they bought the particular pills of probiotics that have lactobacillus and bifidobacteria, and it just blessed them amazingly that they're telling other people about it. So if you don't have enough of that good bacteria, which is psychological medication that God created for your body, and you don't have the wherewithal in your members, you might not be joyful. And you might be depressed. You might be anxious. You might be stressed out. So, saints, things are in the Word as hints of how we're to live in this life, not just spiritually, but also physically. And as in Luke 11, the Lord's Prayer, when you look at it, and Holy Spirit is likened to daily bread, that indicates that we are to take bread daily, which in the old days was the fermentation. Good, Sue, was the fermentation of that lactobacillus and bifidobacteria that were evidenced in the foods that they had at the time. And the good thing about sourdough bread is the glycemic index is really low. Not It's unlike regular breads. It's what people eat on episode three of the Netflix Blue Zones documentary. It's what they eat in Greece. And that particular blue zone, which means people live up and older to 100 years old. They have centurions that live over there. And they're eating every day. They're eating bread. And in that particular episode, they're dancing. They're laughing. They're just sitting around. And they're living life. If you're not living life, if you're mad, if you're angry, if you're having mood swings, if you're looking at others poorly and you're talking about how bad everybody else is, how bad the government is, how bad the church is, how bad everything is, 
you know, you might need some good bacteria. <laughs> it might not just be hormonal. It might also be in relation to bacteria. And this is what's interesting. As God had me research, especially with one of my clients, uh, where God had me research that B12 is only, hear this, B12 is only synthesized by lactobacillus. It is not synthesized by your own body's ability. It is only synthesized by this particular bacteria. And so if you're B12 deficient or if you have B12 and you're not synthesizing it, it is because you don't have that good microbiota in your body. And what's interesting is that it just has so much effects. As I did more research, it also is the way in which you absorb D3, vitamin D. It also synthesizes the other B vitamins. And so you can probably be eating right according to your perceptibility and knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. But let me tell you what, God is really bringing such wisdom from above for us to walk in the ability to have the resource to walk in love. Kathy, then that might be evidence of it with my clients that are low in B12 deficiency. The one of the things that I'm having them do is look at incorporating those good bacteria that help synthesize it. And so you might need to check your microbiome in relation to what am I eating and what do I need to eat that will have the expression of these good bacteria for my gut. So saints, as we end here today, know that it is only by God's love. He loved the world that he sent Christ, the servant, the branch. And because he sent Christ to help Christ, Christ sent the helper, right? And let me get to that, that, uh, that scripture. I want to end with that because this is the attendant candle, the helper, right? And so, uh, John 14, 16, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate. What's interesting, Nehemiah in Hebrew means comforter. It indicates helper. Yesterday, the car tag on my way to pick Rich up from work was to help. The first car tag dropping Rich off at work was Yahweh. Is that not crazy? Yahweh to help. That's the comforter. That's the helper. That's the Holy Spirit in us, right? And so, uh, John 14, 16, 14, 26, but the comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to represent me and act on my behalf, he will teach you all things, amen, and he will cause you to recall and remind you and bring into remembrance everything I've told you. Of course, John 15, 26, but when the comforter, counselor, helper, advocate, intercessor, strengthener, standby comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who comes, proceeds from the Father, he himself will testify regarding me. Holy Spirit, the helper, always testifies of Christ Jesus in us, that love that abides, and Holy Spirit brings us the joy of that. Is that not phenomenal? Oh my goodness. We'll see what tomorrow's teaching brings, and I pray that you enjoy these teachings. Get on my YouTube channel, Table It, to see more of them. And share these teachings for Hanukkah with your friends. And y'all celebrate tonight. God bless you. I love you. Have an amazing day.